Hi, this is Dr. Anna, your physical geology professor. Today we're going to talk about the igneous rocks. Um, this slide shows the, uh, the rock cycle. Um, this is a very simplified version of the one in the book. Um, I use three keywords for each rock groups uh, and then you have to understand that every rock can become every rock at any time. So I start with the igneous rocks because the igneous rocks were the earliest rocks on earth and earth was molten and then it started to cool down and igneous rock formed first. Uh, obviously the keyword for igneous rock is the melting. So if you have these arrows, the melting word always has to go toward the igneous rocks. So on this other side, from metamorphic rocks, when they melt, they will become igneous rocks. Um, the next one would be the sedimentary rocks, sedimentary. And the keyword I use for the sedimentary rocks is the weathering, because every rock by weathering will become a sedimentary rock. So any kind, any time the arrow goes to the sedimentary rocks, it has to have weathering on it. So metamorphic rocks too will weather into sedimentary. And from igneous or sedimentary rocks, if you have high heat and pressure, it will actually metamorphose and become metamorphic rock. So for me, the metamorphic will have the heat and pressure as keyword. And from any kind of rocks by heat and pressure, metamorphic rocks will form. So that's very simple. I will ask this on the test so you should really know and make sure that the, the arrowheads are going the right way. So igneous rocks will form when the magma, uh, which is basically the molten rocks, cools down and crystallizes. Uh, you can see how the crystallization happen on these figures right here. But the question is, how does the magma form? And um, we have a couple of probable causes. One is the geothermal gradient. Uh, we're going to talk about the hot mantle plums, the friction and the heat transfer. The first thing we have to talk about is the geothermic gradient. The geothermic gradient is basically the rate at which you all know that the temperature is increasing as we go down uh, inside the earth. Uh, the rate at which the temperature increases as we go down is what we call geothermic gradient. Um, if, you, if you measure it a lot of location on earth, and you add it up and divide it by the number of measurements, we're going to get the average of the geothermic gradient. And uh, the calculation come up with that the average uh, geothermic gradient on Earth is 25 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So every ki kilometer as you go down, it's going to be 25 degrees Celsius per kilometer. But that's just our average. You probably will never be able to measure uh, this this anywhere. I mean, um, obviously, if if you're in an area like a convergent plate boundary, like North America on the west, actually, I should show it like this. So the Pacific plate is going underneath. North America is staying, especially in Oregon and Washington. Uh, in those areas, the geothermic gradient is going to be much, much higher because there is melting going on under there. Or if you are in the super volcano Yellowstone, uh, the geothermic gradient is going to be much higher. But if you are on a passive margin, such as Virginia, North Carolina, the geothermic gradient is going to be lower than the average. So here we have a map. It shows you just exactly this. So like right here is Yellowstone, so obviously the, the geothermic gradient is, is much higher than 25 degrees. And if you go to Virginia and these areas, they are pretty low. The next one is the hot mantle plum. And I have told you before that there are places on, uh, in the mantle where we have more radioactive elements than others. So these areas are going to become hot spots and um, the magma is going to form and because it's less dense, it's going to go up to the, toward the surface 
and of course it's gonna heat uh, be a heat source and, and the source of magma formation so that's the hot mental plants and and the next one is the fr friction anytime you have rocks grinding uh, past of each other will generate heat which can cause uh, melting especially along the tectonic zones and the last one is the heat transfer when you have an igneous uh, intrusion like a uh, oceanic continental plate boundary such as Oregon and you, you have the the uh, oceanic crust going down and it melts the melt will start coming up and as it does you know it's a melt and the surrounding rocks are solid it's gonna partially melt the surrounding rocks so that is the heat transfer so the next question we have is uh, what could be the melting temperature and what are the factors controlling it first of all is the is the pressure and you can understand that like knowing that the earth is uh, 6700 kilometer in diameter no that's the radius sorry 700 6700 kilometer and here is the core and so on so if the average gg the geothermic gradient is 10 25 degrees celsius oops 25 degrees celsius per kilometer then what is the temperature down here yeah 6700 times 25 so how can the inner core be solid what what influences it but because the temperature is extreme down there yes you write the pressure so the higher the pressure the higher the melting temperature that's for sure and it's interesting because by the time we're gonna get to the outer outer core remember the outer core is liquid so therefore the pressure is not high enough to keep the iron and nickel in solid form so therefore it's liquid so remember the higher the pressure the higher the melting temperature the next thing which uh which influences the melting temperature is if we have if if the ma if there is water under pressure in the magma actually if there is water under pressure it really decreases the melting temperature from like 900 to 600 50 degrees celsius like like as i already kind of talked about the the plate boundary in the western u.s the pacific plate is going underneath and the magma which is forming here is about 600 degrees celsius and it's forming because as the plate is going down there is always water from the from the ocean which is going down with it so therefore the melting happens at much lower temperature the third one is when we have minerals mixing the minerals are mixing with each other and which is always in the magma always the case in the magma the melting temperature lowers also there is a thing where you always see this when we put salt and ice what happens it melts it's because we are mixing minerals into the ice so now you have ice and salt and that lowers the melting temperature to minus four degrees celsius so therefore we can keep our roads clean now does it matter what are we going to put down on the road could it be anything else yes it could actually not always they don't always use salt anymore sometimes they use magnesium you know salt which i mean sodium chloride sometimes they use magnesium chloride so it's interesting so here we are at the differentiation if you look around on earth and you look at all the igneous rocks there is about 200 different kinds it's crazy isn't it and i had to learn a whole lot of it you only have to know 11 so it's not too bad don't complain um a lot of people i mean including myself has been wondering how come we have so many different kind of sedimentary i mean igneous rocks what makes the difference among them uh, the question is are they all forming from the same magma by differentiation 
or we possibly have different magmas. There was a, a scientist, his name was uh, Bounds, and he was wondering about the same thing, so he actually have um, started some experiment with melting different igneous rocks. So what he did, it was in the 1900s, so quite long ago, and this shows you his lab. These are his furnaces. These little things are his furnaces. What he did actually, he collected all the different igneous rocks from the world, put a little piece of each of them into his furnace and melted it. But he realized that by about 1200 degree, everything was molten. And then very slowly, he started to cool it down. And while it was cooling down, he, he, he used a microscope and he saw what kind of minerals crystallized at what time, what, what temperature. And uh, what he realized that any time he ran this experiment, the minerals were crystallizing in the exact same order every single time, which is extremely interesting. This is what we call the Bounds Reaction Series. Bowens, it, that's his name. Reaction series. He realized that the minerals crystallizing along two branches. One is what the, what he called this continuous branch, where the minerals crystallizing one after another. On the other branch, the minerals are not stopped crystallizing; they have just become bigger and bigger and bigger, and their composition changes through time. Uh, so this is what we call the balance reaction series and I guess I'm gonna stop here and then I will continue the next segment